Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Hallelujah. So, let us, uh, us all brag for the goodness of the Lord in our life. Then, uh, so, I'm saying that if we are, we have something to boast, let us boast to the Lord. Amen? So, anyone uh, want to testify about the goodness of the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I will um uh, I will bring the goodness of the Lord in my life and also for my family. It's amazing, it's amazing, uh it's amazing love, it's amazing um you know protection. Despite of the typhoon, especially in what happened, as we heard, for the typhoon, it was really devastating the area of the Philippines, most especially in the region and Isaiah's region seven, eight, it's also nine. But praise be to God because um, I'm not praising God because someone is died, but I'm praising God because. Uh, in my family, <laughs> they are they are all uh, they are all uh, they are all alive. They are all alive, but some. But we are mourning for the others also. Amen. Yeah, that's the good thing because we believe that um, in every in everything in everything that happened, the Lord has purpose in it. So, and I believe that the things that happened that uh, really really uh, teach teach us teach everyone each and every one of us that. Really, um, have to call as we have uh, our, our faith will be will be uh, will be more on God and have to really depend on Him and call upon Him, call upon His name, Amen. And praise be to God also because uh, since 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 I came to know Jesus, it's my uh, it's my um, years. Four years in this family, in this, in this family of the Lord, celebrate Christmas. Because before I remember, I remember when uh, during Christmas, you feel like you, I I feel like very sad because um, my family is not here and you know feel like lonely. But praise be to God because because of the because of the family because Christmas is not only today but christmas should be every day amen, amen? because it's christmas it's from the word christmas is christ and christ is in us every day it's not only today or it's only Christ, uh, christmas but it's every day that's why we have to be you have to be have uh you have to be enjoy you have to be uh you know alive every day it's not only today amen and i praise be to god about that one because he really show me, he really tell me that what to do, that I have to be grateful every day. It's not, it's not the old during Christmas, but it's every day. And praise be to God, as I, as I, I want to share with you of his goodness, of revealing this to me, because not all people have this. Not all people uh, know about, about the, the real essence of Christmas. Because being is, you have to you have to be uh, have joy and will be happy every day because Christ is in us. Amen. And all glory and honor belongs to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas, Christmas, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Uh, I would like to uh, thank also the Lord. This is the last month of the year, 2021. And I'd like to take this uh, privilege because maybe it will be the last or maybe it will be the start. Hallelujah. I was reminded by the Lord uh, from uh, this the verse, uh, Galatians 2, verse 20. It's very familiar. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and the life I now live in the flesh. 
I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. I thank the Lord for this verse. Someone reminded me and uh, it will be my life verse aside from uh, Philippians 1 verse 6 that uh, the, the good works that the Lord has begun in me, he will complete it until the completion, until the coming day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, I'd like to thank the Lord how he keeps my life, how he preserved every time I would like to run away. I was like Jonah. But uh, the Lord is always reminding me that I have purpose. Why I have called you. And uh, this is a source of joy. <laughs> joy. Praise the Lord for joy. <laughs> I am about to run away, actually. <laughs> but the Lord, again and again, is pulling me back for this church. So I'm staying. Praise God. Um, I would like to uh, thank God for the opportunity for the privilege. I would like to uh, Lord thank you for for everything that you've done in our life. Uh, today is 24, so later on it will be a uh, Christmas. <laughs> I thank God for reminding me that uh, says in Romans uh, chapter 1 verse 16 that for I am not ashamed of the gospel of God because that word is power of salvation and I'm so uh, thankful to God that he allowed to to share the word to my family that Christmas is not just only about giving, about what we have put in our table. Because we should share the greatest gift that we receive through other people. And, we, and I reminded that why you should ashamed, ashamed to share the gospel to your family. You can share the gospel to every people, but you should ask to the Holy Spirit for the boldness. That this is the time to share the word. This is the time that you will you will enlighten your, your families. That Santa is that coming. But Jesus Christ will yes. be real. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So uh brethren, uh, we are here again. Uh, another uh, form of worship, which is giving. Praise God. So uh, I believe, and all of you uh, in in our opening song, there is a joy to the world, joy. and God telling us that let every heart uh, be open in the room. So God is uh, opening our our heart to listen and. To understand, to understand his uh, his word, amen. amen. So uh, our uh, scriptures will be found in uh, Isaiah chapter nine verse six, and it says, "For us a child is born, to us is a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God." Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen? Hallelujah. Who knows this uh, child is born? And who is this? The Son is given by our yes. God. Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Praise God. Why God is giving? Our Father is giving His Son. The only one begotten Son. Because 
we are corrupted because Satan is deceive us. For how many years he deceive us? That he's always saying, Santa Claus is coming to town. We are wasting our time. Not just only our time, but our treasures. Why? Because we spend. Sometimes before, we just uh, put the sacks and, you know, we, uh, we put some uh, gift. But we, we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He governs us. And the government upon his shoulder. Like here. In UAE, there's a government. We should abide in the law. We should abide in the commandments of this uh, country. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. It was so less that if we acknowledge God that he is our counselor, sometimes when we receive blessings, we don't know where we will spend because we deserve we always say we deserve, I deserve. But when we ask God, God, I want the counsel. Where are these things or where are these uh, blessings I will put? But God is always giving us the real answer, the right answer, that we should be a vessel of his blessings because God is giving us a lot of opportunity a lot of blessings that be enlightened us that we should stop thinking of ourselves but we should think about the gift that he given to us and God is so mighty because He is the one which is glorified when we give. He is the one who will work upon our lives. Yes, sometimes it's hard, but when we give our heart to God, He will help us. And God is always telling us that we should give whatever we have because God is opening the window or the gate of heaven and you cannot measure or we cannot measure the blessings that he will pour it out in our lives and we are not an empty handed because God he will give us everything what we need. And we should remember how God, wonderful counselor, he said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be put in my house and there put me to test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you, and pour down your blessings until there is no need, uh, there is no more need, and I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that I will not destroy the fruits of your soil, and your vine is filled, <coughs> shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. See how wonderful counsel of our, our God. It's not just only counsel, but the protection is there, the assurance is there that when we give, it will not be wasted. Because God is always telling us 
that if you want to invest, invest in eternal life. And if we acknowledge God is mightier, we will not worship God of Mammon. We will worship the one true God. And there is everlasting Father who waits for us. That in the time that we face to face in Him, He will say, Good job, my faithful and good servant. And if we give, if we acknowledge Jesus Christ is our Prince of Peace, we have the peace of mind. We are able to give. We have the peace. And will not bother. And we will not doubt to give because he is the one. He is our Jehovah Jireh. The one who will provide everything. And we will not always think about God wants our money. He don't want our money. He wants our heart. And we should remember that God is always telling us that money is the less in the kingdom of heaven. And if you want to partake to his kingdom, and if you want to be called a faithful servant, we should give whatever we have. Because God is giving us a lot of gifts. God is giving us Every gift, different gift. If we give that one, no more. And there is no human being will deceive the second. Because sometimes we don't want to go to the church because in times of giving, we are afraid. But we don't be afraid because God. Is sustaining everything. Even the unbelievers, he sustained. And what if we, we are the believers of God. We are his sons and daughters. And of course, he will not leave us empty. And be sure that God will put out Blessing to us, but we should we should always acknowledge and ask His counsel because God is not him. He's always listening to us, and when we give, we should give with a heart of a cheerful, cheerful giver because God wants us. That when we give his name and his glory, we will display in our lives because we give, because we acknowledge his sovereignty and his power, and we are not acknowledging that everything's what we are just came from us, but came. From our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us keep to the
are our King and our Savior, our healer, Lord, you are here. We worship you. Saves us from our sins. 
Father, we thank you as we're going to celebrate the day that you have already given us today, the victory in our life, the joy in our heart, and the peace in our mind. We are rededicating our lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we all know. Let's, let's settle that. I believe everyone knew that two days from the, uh, tomorrow will be Christmas Day. A day that we always celebrate uh, as we celebrate the, the goodness of God in our lives. When we were just kids, when we were just maybe four, five, six, seven, I don't know when we realized that Santa Claus is not coming. You know? uh, during our days, during our younger years, we, we were, there is uh, a belief in our mind that during the 24th, you know, the midnight, before 25th, the midnight, Santa Claus will go to visit us and will give us gifts according, uh, according to the behavior that we have during the rest of the year or the past year. Why? Because we believe that Santa Claus is going to give us a gift if we are good. Because we deserve something. So because as a child, and what, has, and what has been imparted to us is that if we are good, we deserve a gift. We deserve a reward. Sad to say, Santa Claus is just a meat. Meat. So the things that we the, the things that we were doing before, I don't know you guys, but I, I, I used to put socks near the window because we don't have a chimney in Philippines. Or <laughs> chimney outside. Huh? Outside. <laughs> we're just putting socks outside the windows and uh, and, and uh, hoping that Santa Claus will see it. Or Santa Claus will stop to put something on the socks. How I pray, we, we, I, I think the bigger the sack, the bigger gift that you will have. Because if you're just going to put my sack, which I'm wearing today, it will be a very small gift. Sad to say, Christmas has lost its original meaning. People are so busy about the gifts that they're going to buy, the about organizing parties, Thinking of what to be, uh, what food will be in our table during the, the Christmas Eve, and we lost somehow, if not us, and or if not all, we lost the real essence of why we are celebrating Christmas. Even now, I, I don't know about you, and I hope. And each and every one of us understand or understood what Christmas means. And it's not just about gift giving. There is a, I, 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 it's, it's sad to see that most of the people around us, around the world, are busy celebrating and waiting for Santa Claus. Busy decorating their Christmas tree. Busy waiting for the gifts that they will receive and the gift that they will give. I am not saying that it is bad at all. What am I trying to say is that Christmas is not just preparing food, preparing gifts, and having a Christmas tree. Sad to say, the world is now exchanging Jesus Christ to Santa Claus. Angels to reindeers. Gift that will not last as a gift from Jesus Christ, a gift of life. We all believe during our, I don't know if all of us believe on it, but come to think of it, when we were a child, what important to us is the new clothes that we have. In Philippines, if you don't have much money, 
October, November, September, October, November, December, you were saying you have to buy new clothes during Christmas. And you will not wear it. Sure. During my days, I am re I am not going to wear it, not unless it is Christmas. And it, you have a, a new clothes from uh, your socks, shoes. If you are old enough, you want jeans. If you're still a child, you want short. And you always have this belt bag. Why? Because you will go to your grandmother and God's father, and you will ask for blessings and you will ask for gifts. Correct. And most of the time, our cousins, our brothers and sisters, we always come together during afternoon or evening. So how much did you get? <laughs> how much did you get? Did you go to this place? Did you go to this place? So we, we are enjoying life the way the world taught us. But that is not the real Christmas. Even Christmas, as they were saying, it's not found in the Bible itself. The concept is there. You cannot find celebrating Christmas on the Bible. They were saying that Christmas is all about our Lord Jesus Christ, which has been born in Bethlehem. It is true. But if you're going to read, if you are going to read the Bible and study it uh, thoroughly, it's not the it, it's the story that has been passed to us. It's not the same as the story that has been written in the Bible. They were saying, and they told us. That when Mary and Joseph travel, come to Bethlehem, Mary is riding a donkey. That's why we, we, we have this picture in our mind that Mary is riding a donkey and there is a manger. And no one let them in during that night. That is why Jesus Christ was born outside on the stable. On the stable. Then the story told us or tells us that right after the, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, a star appeared in heaven and three kings are, march, are, are, are marching towards our Lord Jesus Christ to give them gifts. Are we still friends? Amen. That's the story that has been uh, told to us. And since that story has been passed through generations, we have this picture of, in our mind, the setting of what the first Christmas is. Amen. That story is not entirely true or 10% I think of it is true. 90% is just a myth and 90% is just a Christmas that has been made up in our mind because during the birth of our lord jesus christ let us see let's let's uh let's read luke 2 verse 3 to 5 and all went to register each to his own town and joseph also went up from galilee from the town of nazareth to judea to the city of david which is called bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. So, buntis to see. So, Mary is carrying our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, look at this. And all went to register, each to his own town. So, the reason why Joseph is traveling from Judea, I know. From Galilee, sorry. From Galilee to Nazareth is they need to register ano, according to lineage. Because the census, because the government of Romans is conducting a census. It is not required for the woman to accompany his husband. Joseph can register his family even without Mary. The question now is why Mary is with Joseph? It is because it is because it is because that Mary 
you know what happened to Mary and Joseph at the at, at the Galilee when when Joseph wanted to betroth wanted to file a divorce for Mary because Mary is conceiving a child which he thought is from other man but it is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now, Mary or Joseph wanted to hide Mary or wanted to protect Mary from the gossip in Galilee. He wanted to protect his wife. That is why one of the reasons why Joseph is with Mary is Joseph is protecting her. It is not also written, you know, the, the distance between uh, the distance between Galilee to Nazareth to Judea, if you're traveling outside Judea, is 80 miles away. So if you can imagine your wife walking 80 miles away the distance, it is impossible for them to reach there on time. So it is not true in the story that they, when they reach the when they reach Nazareth, Mary gave birth to our Lord Jesus Christ. It was believed that it, it takes few weeks more before she gave birth. And it is not on so since it is not written that Mary is riding a donkey or any animal, it was believed also. That during that time, during that days, they are riding a camel or a donkey. Ano? So it is not the same as what we have pictured in our mind. Okay. So was Jesus, so since Jesus was not, uh, or since Mary did not give birth, on that same night that they arrived on Nazareth, so come to look at this. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. So while, the Bible says, while they are there. So they have arrived already. And they have stayed already in Nazareth before Mary gave birth to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now. Here's the thing. They were also saying that no one allowed them to have a room to stay or an inn. Why? Because they were saying, or it is, or, or it, the, every hotel on that particular time is already full because of the census that is happening and the celebration, the Passover, uh, the, the celebration that will happen a week after. So each and every travelers are, are, are passing by Nazareth, going to Bethlehem. Amen. Now, have to think of it. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. So there were no place for them in the inn, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are just being kicked off and they beg someone for them to allow them to enter the manger. The, the, as if you are going to study this more deeper, there is also an article that saying that Mary and Joseph stayed with their relatives. But the houses are full already, so they don't have a proper room for them to stay to. Sabi dito. Now, pasahin natin dito, ano? In. There was no place for them in the in. The original word for in is kataluma. Kataluma. Which means a guest chamber a lodging place or an inn, which has been used also in different book and verse in the Bible like Mark and Luke. So on Mark 14, verse 14, 
And wherever he enters, this is our Lord Jesus Christ speaking. Say that the and wherever he enters, say that the master of the house, teacher says, Where is my guest room? Which means Kataluma. Where is my guest room? Where I will make, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. So when Jesus, I mean Jesus, when Mary and uh, Joseph was traveling, it is not directly that someone just put them on the manger. It is just that they don't have a proper room or a place to stay in. So it is probably that this particular person or this particular family who welcomed them give them a space outside the house. Amen. Amen. Now, as we go through, we're going to realize that our Lord Jesus Christ did not have his birthday. Alam mo yun? Paano ko ba sasabihin ko ng ano? Jesus Christ Ay, ganito lang para mas madali. Mary did not give birth for our Lord Jesus Christ December 25th. His birthday hasn't been recorded. It's not even written in the Bible. Amen. Come to think of it. But we have or God gave us by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit a hint when he was born. As a tradition, when Jesus Christ was born, the three kings visited him and offered a gift. Some of us knew the name of that three kings. Who knows the name? I will give gifts later. There is a Gaspar, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, those three things is just a part of the story that we have made in our mind. Because the Bible says that for unto you, for, 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 uh, that it is not a king who visited Jesus Christ, but a wise man. It is also not written in the Bible how many are they? But we knew that it is more than one. Because it is written as plural. Amen. Now, Luke 2.11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, referring to our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was born Ano po? Not on the same day that Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, ano po? and definitely it is not December 25. Why? Because December in that in Judea was so cold and it is not proper to travel. It is also difficult for the Roman government to organize a census if it is December, because they, would, they say that in Judea, month of December and January is a rainy season. So it is very difficult for the people to travel. Now, how are we going to know when Jesus Christ, uh, when is the date that Jesus Christ was born? Look at this. According to Luke 1, verse 26 to 27, who knows uh, Zachariah and John the Baptist? We all knew that John the Baptist is a cousin of Jesus Christ. Now, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, and we knew that John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus Christ. Amen. In the sixth month, of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an, uh, an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, 
to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. So it is established that John the Baptist is six months ahead of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, since the date is also not written here, it is difficult for us to have a conclusion when Jesus Christ was born. But we knew when uh, Elizabeth got pregnant. So, Luke, Luke 1 verse 5 says, In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. It means they are commissioned to perform something on the tabernacle. Abijah was being performed eight weeks. And he had a wife from daughters of Aaron, and her name was or uh, uh, her name was Elizabeth. Now, this is the timeline. Zacharias served in the temple on the ninth week. That ninth week, ano po, the month of Nisan, the Nisan is the festival. The month of Nisan corresponds to our month of March. It started March. So nine weeks from March, meron ako dito. Zacharias' temple service fell in the month of May. Kasi from March, nine weeks will be May. Amen. Are we still friends? Now, when this time of service was completed, he returned home. Alam, you know what happened to, to Zacharias? He, he was, or he became mute. Why? Because he did not believe what the angel told him. That Elizabeth will go into bore a son. Okay, on that day, when his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. Amen. Now, we are going to compute roughly. Or we're going to calculate, sorry, roughly when Jesus Christ was born. Now, March, uh, or March is the beginning of Jewish calendar. So after March, after nine weeks, May, Zachariah served in the temple. Ngayon. Then after that, same month, Elizabeth got pregnant. So since John the Baptist is older than our Lord Jesus Christ, six months, so we can count six months, which will fall on November. So November, Mary got pregnant. Are we still on the same page? November. So Mary got pregnant on November. And how many months? Ilan ang, ilan ang, nine. nine months. A mother will carry her baby on the on her womb. So it was calculated roughly that our Lord Jesus Christ was born on August or September. And during this month. This is the perfect month for the people to travel from, from Galilee to Nazareth. Kasi parang dito yan, medyo summer. This is the perfect time for the people to travel. Amen. So the question there now is, why are we celebrating it on December 25th? So next year, if you want, my <laughs> personal opinion is that date doesn't matter. If you want to celebrate my birthday tomorrow, it's, it's fine by me. Everybody's happy. 
I will celebrate it tomorrow, then I will go and celebrate it again on the day that uh, the day of my real birthday. But come to think of it, why do we need to celebrate Christmas on 25th if Jesus Christ, if our Lord Jesus Christ did not uh, really born, tama ba ako? Yung ibig sabihin yung salita ko, yung English ko ba? Oh. <laughs> if, if our Lord Jesus Christ did not born on December 25th, come to think of all. Wala na yan. Okay. The, we are celebrating our Lord Jesus Christ or Christmas on the 25th of December. And you know when it was started? When Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, it is not the first Christmas as the story is telling us, as the old people is telling us. Why? Because Christmas, the first Christmas was established during the 325 AD. 325 AD. The first Christmas was a was a was a pagan festival. The first Christmas was not really for or the celebration or the holidays. It's not just particularly for our Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, it's for pagan religion. Pagan who offered children, pagan who made who made idolatries, especially in the north. Sweden, Norway, Alaska. That is where the idolatry or the pagan festival started. It was believed also that because of the Orthodox Christians and the Catholic, uh, and because of, uh, I forgot the name, Constantine, they, they wanted since the, the since the attention of the people are turning into pagan religion and festival, why not make uh, also a festival and a holiday for our Lord Jesus Christ? That is why Christmas was born or is born. The first Christmas was established 325 AD ago, way before the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Way before the day he was born. Now, since we are ce celebrating Christmas as a birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, December 25th, what is now the essence of celebrating Christmas? Why are we celebrating Christmas? Is it because of it is a Christian tradition and culture which is not written in the Bible, but it is not also harm, harmful. It is, why are we celebrating Christmas even before, or even now, as a Christian? Tradition and culture. You know? Commemorate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Being thankful to what he has done. Being thankful to the things that he has done for us. The things that he has done on the cross. So celebrating Christmas is not just for the gift that we are going to receive. For the things that we already own. But by the things that has been given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what time or what day we are going to celebrate. As long as we are celebrating for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our birthday can be celebrated anytime we want to. It is just that how we are going to celebrate it. Even before, they were saying, or even now, they were saying that Christmas tree should not be inside the Christian's houses. Why? Because Christmas tree was done before also in the north, then they believe that the Christmas tree or the fig tree, uh, I forget the name. They, they, they believe that it has a power. So what they do is that they cut it and put them inside the house, put some gold lights and everything, and they are worshiping it. But come to think, but those who don't understand it, if you ask them, why do you have Christmas tree in your house? They were telling us, that is just that I want to celebrate Christmas. 
Amen? So whether we knew or whether they knew or they know what Christmas tree means, they are just celebrating it by heart. So believer or unbeliever, atheists, they have it. Why? Because it's the way how you celebrate things. How you celebrate holidays. We all knew who Jesus Christ is. We, know who, we all knew who Mary is. We all knew who Joseph is. But how are we going or, or how are we looking at Jesus Christ as a king? How are we looking the day? How are we, how are we taking it? You know, Christmas is tomorrow. We can even celebrate and we are going to celebrate it tonight as one family. Why? Because it's not about the day. It's not about the place. But it's about what's in our heart and how we are remembering our Lord Jesus Christ. When he was born in a manger, when he was born and given to us by the Father, he is our Savior. Can you post Isaiah 9? The yung anak anin sa giving. Jesus Christ was given to us by God the Father for us a child is born. A child is born in Bethlehem. But if you are going to notice it here, to us a son is given. A child is different. A child is given to us by birth. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ as a human. To us, son is given. Christ. Jesus was born in a manger as a child. To us, a son is given. Inside that child, inside that Jesus, there is a Christ. For the child is born, to us, a son is given. And the government shall be in his shoulder. The government, if people need something, we should always come to the government because the government will take care of its people. So come to think of it. A child is born. Inside that child is a son. Huh? And the government will be on his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of is. That is the gift that we have received from God the Father. You don't come here or you don't just stop knowing Jesus. You need to know Christ. Jesus Christ is just the wrapper of the gift that God gave us. Of course, you know Jesus. We all knew who Jesus is. But as we embracing him as Christ. Because embracing him as your Lord and Savior is different from knowing him. Receiving a gift, if you will not open it, is the same as you did not receive a gift. A child is born to us, accept it. To us, a son is given, open the gift that God gave you, which is Christ. Let me give you, let me give you an, an example in the book. You know what happened in the book of Mark when uh, the disciples was in the midst of the storm and Jesus Christ is sleeping. The, the, you know the story. Not that me read it to you. According to the book of Mark, and the book, that time, when the storm, ano po? Anyway, kwento ko na lang. Ano ito yan? That day, when evening came, he said to his disciple, let us go over to, to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squad came up. Furious. Furious. 
Furious means furious. Amen? And the wave broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. So on that particular storm, when the disciples are scared that, and they know that they are going to die because the boat will sink, Jesus Christ is just sleeping in a cushion. He's sleeping deeply. He was resting. I know. And he got up because the disciples teacher, the, the, the disciples told him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Sabi niya, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet and be still. Ano, sabi niya. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Most of us knew and understood this uh, context in the Bible that it was a power of our Lord Jesus Christ over the power over the nature, which is entirely true. Now, let me give you again another story, story of Jonah. What happened to Jonah? Because of his disobedience to God, because he don't want to obey God, he ran away from him. What did he do? He find a boat going to San Nineveh. So, so there is a boat going to Tarshish because Jesus, because Jesus, because Jonah don't want to obey God. He take that boat. He paid for that particular boat. Amen. Amen. Then. This is what happened. In the midst of their travel, ano, doon sa paglalakbay nila, a storm came also. Do you know the story? The storm came also. And those people, yung tawag nito, the crew of the ship was throwing their, their luggage on the sea because they thought that they, 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 they brought someone or they will, it will lighten up the boat or the ship. Then they look where Jonah is. Then when they have, when they have found Jonah, Jonah is what? Sleeping also. And the crew asked Jonah, Jonah, how can we calm the storm? Then Jonah told them, through me, or throw me on the sea. This is happening because I disobey God. So that particular storm that Jonah is experiencing with the crew is God's wrath poured into that particular time. Why? Because of Jonah's disobedience. On the book of Mark, our Lord Jesus Christ is sleeping well. Why? Because though there is a storm, though there is a wrath of God, it is not for him because he is perfect. Because he obeyed God. Unlike us, unlike Jonah, we've been experiencing storm in our lives because of our disobedience. Because the wrath of God, because of sin. We don't need now, as we are celebrating Christmas, this is one of the reasons why we are celebrating Christmas. We don't need to tell someone to throw us on the sea or the storm to come. It has already been come by our Lord Jesus Christ. So the wrath that has been or that is dedicated to us has been calmed down. It has been dealt with on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we are celebrating Christmas. It's not the gift that we're going to receive. Praise the Lord for the gift. It's not the Santa Claus. You know, Santa Claus will give you things. Let's pretend Santa Claus is real. 
Santa Claus will give you gift based on what you have done because you deserve it. But our Lord Jesus Christ will give you gift that you need even if we don't deserve it. Merry Christmas. People wanted to do things for God to accept them. If you knew someone who's still doing things for God to accept them, tell them that they have already been accepted. But receiving gift is a two-way process. Receiving will be, or, or giving gift is a two-way process. After receiving the gift, after taking the gift, you need to use it. The gift of life has been given to you. So live a godly life. Healing has already been provided to you. So live as if you are already here. Provisions, things that you will be needing has been already been given to you. Then have faith in God that it is already given to you. But pastor, I still have lack of I still lack of things that I want. Yes, because you don't need it. Things will be given by God according to our needs, not according to our wants. Remember that when God created us, He created everything first. Why that is because God wants us to have everything that we need before He created us. He gave our Lord Jesus Christ even before the foundation of this earth, before the foundation of the world. Why? Because God knew that we are going to need him. Celebrate Christmas for Christ. Acknowledging what he has done. Acknowledging the things that he had given to us. Receive the gift of life from him. Open it. Use it. If you are still chained in the things that is not aligned of you, maybe because you are not opening the gift that has been given to you, whoever sets Jesus free is free indeed. Accept that gift. Embrace it. And you will be free. You still feel sick. Embrace the healing that God gave you. Open the gift. Christmas has been given to us for a purpose, for be the purpose. So celebrate it with a purpose. Sad to say that most of the people, or most of the people around us, are celebrating Christmas the way they wanted to celebrate it according to the God that they had made in their mind. Let's all, let's, let's, let's all accept it. But whatever we are seeing in, in, in the environment during Christmas, I used to do it. I just keep on drinking and, and get drunk because I'm celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. But do you think is that that's the way that God wants us to celebrate his birthday? Really? We, we all been there. Do you think that that they do you think that God wants us to be see on the worldly things that we're going to receive and we are and the things that we are going to give instead of praying and worshiping him? Come on. He wants our hearts. He wants our obedience. He wants you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a relationship with, uh, on someone. You, you know, we all want to have a, a good relationship with someone. Come on. We want uh, a handsome or a beautiful lady. And it's a man. Well, we are all handsome. We, we have our particular uh, tawag doon? Assets. Assets. Asset. 
But come to think of it. We're going to have a relationship with the creator of heaven and earth. For him, by him, and for him. It was born. You're going to have a relationship with the king. If you're going to have a relationship with the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace. If you're going to have a relationship to the healer. If you're going to have a relationship to the provider. What else do you want for? What else do you need? What else do you want? Things in life is just a bonus that God is giving us. But the real jackpot is having a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. With God the Father. With, 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 with the Holy Spirit. Today as we're going to celebrate Christmas later also. As we're going to, to, to celebrate it. Let's celebrate it with an intention of thanking our Lord Jesus Christ on what he have done on the cross, what he have done for us, what he have given us. Remember, and I want to tell you this, and I want to encourage you, that each and every gift that you have received from our Lord Jesus Christ, please use it. Open it. Because it is already been given to you. Do not let the devil steal, kill, and destroy the gift that God gave you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Let's all stand. Up. Father, we thank you for the gift. Through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you are continually teaching us the real meaning of Christmas. We thank you, Lord, for the heart that is willing to receive and give. We thank you, Father, that you are the one in the midst of everything. And as we celebrate Christmas today, teach us, Lord, how to celebrate it the way you want us to celebrate it. Teach us, Lord, how we are going to be to receive the joy that you have already given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the heart that is willing to be aligned to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah for that wonderful message from our God. So, December 25 is not the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there was never a three kings in the Bible, but it was mentioned as a wise man. But one thing is for sure, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. Amen. Amen. That's why you are celebrating Christmas. And uh, let me uh, leave you with this phrase, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Amen. And as we close our celebration, let us continue to live for Christ. Trust God and receive his blessings. Let us uh, raise our hands for the benediction. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another. In accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honored and be glorified forever and ever. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes, let us sing to the Lord. Let us celebrate today, this day, this Christmas day, because we have Jesus, our Counselor, our everlasting Father, our Savior, our Healer. Let's see, try to know what